Okay, so I had no intention of filming today, but then this guy popped up at my door. So even though it's already like 6 p.m., I threw on some makeup, I like forgot concealer, so this is why my eyes are looking the way they are right now. But I think it's going to be okay because I'm going to be trying all of the new Disney Princess Super Shock shadows all over my eyes all of them so I think by the end of this video my eyes are already gonna be looking a little rough anyway if you're not familiar with the makeup side of my channel or haven't seen specifically my collection video of all of my single eyeshadows you'll know I'm a very avid fan of Colourpop Super Shocks I wouldn't say I'm a collector of Super Shocks necessarily I don't get all of the ones they release but the number I have is bordering on pretty significant. So this comes in a gorgeous box. I bought the full set, as you can tell. I probably am going to be keeping it in the box because fun fact, I don't have any more room in my drawers for more single shadows, or at least for super shocks. I do still have room in some of my single palettes but uh, super shocks are kind of their own thing, stand alone in their own little pots. So I think how order of operations is gonna go today is I'm going to take each super shock shadow one by one, swatch it on my arm, and then apply it on my eyes. I'm gonna see if I have time today to play around with different combos of the different super shocks, because like I said, I'm filming pretty late, so the sun is gonna start going down soon. I actually wouldn't be surprised if I have to film this on two separate days. So if my makeup looks slightly different, from a shot to shot that might be why but anyways let's get started so the first one is this white shade which is not like any other super shock shadow that I have at least although I know this isn't the first kind of like blinding white one they've come out with this is I'm wishing which is uh, I believe snow white's super shock shadow so yeah there we go this is why I said like maybe if I have time I'll play around with the different combinations because I had a feeling this white would be more like a topper and yeah. So I'm not sure how well it's gonna look on the eyes just by itself, but I'm gonna go give it a whirl. So on its own, I like it just by itself more than I thought I would. I definitely would not pair this shadow with this lip. I feel like they're kind of contrasting against each other in not the greatest way. I feel like the shadow would look really good with one of those like wet eye gloss kind of things. You know what I'm talking about, the things you put on top of shadows or even underneath to make it look like a, give it a glossy kind of effect, but it's eyeshadow instead of lip gloss. I know ColourPop themselves have something like that, but I don't own anything like that, so I couldn't test that theory out myself, but I feel like this is one of those shadows that you did a glossy lid. It would look really good. That was definitely an ultra glitter formula because there was so much glitter fallout from that shade, more than I've ever seen from any super shock shadow shade I've ever had, even the other ultra glitters I've had in the past. Okay, so the next shade is called How Far I'll Go. It's Moana's shade. Um, my best friend's one of her favorite Disney princesses is Moana. So as soon as they saw that they weren't doing a Moana shade, I thought of her. Ooh! Oh wait, I forgot to swatch this. This is very buttery. Um, I'm wishing was also pretty buttery, but this is even more so. Yeah, wow, ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, look at the comparison, how that swatched versus I'm wishing. This is a buttery shade. I almost don't need to go in twice. Yeah, woohoo! Oh, that is beautiful. You know how people have a color that's my lips, but better? This is like my eyes, but better. I know whether or not you're gonna feel that way is gonna be determined by your skin tone, but if you're close to my skin tone, like this is a great kind of like nude everyday shade, but still kind of gives that little metallic pop. I have to redraw a little bit of my brow there because it actually came off when I was wiping off the last shade. But this next shade is called Beauty and the Beast, and it's obviously Belle's shade. It's even got a little, um, the rose, um, indent. They all have that little, like, decal on the front of the lid. It's super cute. Man, I keep forgetting to swatch these. I just want to go right in on the lid. 
Ooh. This is a little bit more, it's the same intensity as I'm wishing, as opposed to kind of this like really intense metallic, like how far I'll go. This shade is close to being like a my eyes but better neutral shade, but it's a, like a lot of gold shades I've had in the past where if you, especially if you zoom in, you can see it's more of kind of a true goldy yellow. I tend to not like wearing shades like this all over the eyes by itself like this anymore. I used to, but then I found kind of more um, neutral shades like this that suit my eyes better. Whereas this kind of almost clashes with my skin tone. So if it's like the most prominent color in a look, it makes my eyeshadow look kind of weird. So something like this for my skin tone for me is more more better suited as being like strictly an inner corner highlight as opposed to having it all over the lid like this. Alrighty, on to the first shade in the second row. This one is called Once Upon a Dream and it's uh, Aurora from Sleeping Beauty shade. I think these are all named after songs from the respective Disney princess movies. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that though because we haven't gotten through all the shades. Ooh, this is gonna be more like how far I'll go. It's more of like that bold metallic kind of texture, very buttery. And also, um, if you watched my ColourPop Powerpuff Girls video, you'll know my affinity for shades like this because it's that like salmon pink, not quite rose gold, but just a little bit deeper. So yeah, I'm excited for this shade. I love this shade on me. This is actually the first shade I've tried that I can really say it pairs well with the lipstick I'm wearing. I feel like all of the shades I've worn so far have not been the greatest fit for this lip. Um, but another thing to note, I accidentally made a dent in the pan with the lid on accident. Like that's how soft these uh, formulas are just accidentally make a dent in, in it with a lid like that and, and so yeah I love the shade it's super sparkly kind of like I'm wishing but there's not as much fallout there still definitely is a little and I did only really start seeing the fallout from I'm wishing once I started taking it off so that might be the same case here I don't know let's find out Oh yeah, Once Upon a Dream ended up being okay compared to I'm Wishing in terms of the glitter fallout. The next shade is the shade I'm probably the most excited because it's Mulan's shade. It's called Reflection and it matches my sweater because of course I coordinated my sweater to the Mulan shade. Ooh. <laughs> it looks more red in a camera, but in person it's more of kind of like a bronze almost. Let's see what it looks like on the eyes. So this is actually the first shade where I'm getting the tiniest bit of pigment fallout as well as like the typical glitter fallout. Yeah, just a little bit along the lower lash. You can just barely notice it. I do want to do a quick comparison though. I'm pretty sure they don't sell the Super Shock shade anymore. This is DJ from the Make-A-Wish collaboration. But the colors were similar enough, at least in my memory, that I wanted to do a comparison. So this is DJ, there we go. You can tell it's starting to dry out a little bit from age. I think some of my older Super Shock shadows, it's, it's getting around time to revive them. Then this is Reflection. Because yeah, these new ones are so much more buttery compared to the ones I have right now. Ooh. So on camera swatched, they look almost identical, but in person, they look a lot more different. DJ is kind of just your typical shimmer. Um, it's slightly more of a brick red than Reflection, where Reflection, it leans more bronze, and then it's got these like yellow flecks in them. I'm pretty sure you can kind of see them on camera. Yeah, because Reflection's the lower one. 
But um, I think the best way to illustrate what they actually look like on person on camera is looking at my two different fingers. I think that illustrates better, a lot better, um, the differences between the two as opposed to when I swatch them. When I swatch them, they look, they look identical. So on my middle finger is DJ and then on my index finger is reflection. And that's definitely illustrates the difference between the two a lot better than swatching. Like I said, ColourPop doesn't sell DJ anymore, but I figured I'd make the comparison just in case you have that shade. I have that shade and when I saw reflection, I thought of it. So I just wanted to see how similar the two were to each other. Okay, so the next shade is called Touch the Sky. It's Merida's shade. I think this is the first time both Merida and Moana, I think, have never had a shade with ColourPop from the previous two collections. There might be somebody else new in here too. Can't quite remember, but definitely Merida and Moana are new inclusions. Ooh, that's pretty. I love me a good jewel tone, especially a green. Although on camera, this is looking more green, whereas in person, the shade is more bluish turquoise. So let's see what it looks like on the eyes. I love this color on my eyes. I'm a sucker both for blues and greens, so it honestly doesn't matter which way it comes out looking more like because those are both kind of my colors. Um, one thing to, to note though, as I was washing off my hand, it did stain my hand, so I am gonna quickly remove this just in case it stains my eyes because you know I still have more shades to try. Okay, so it did stain my eyes just a little bit, particularly my left eye. But luckily with the exception of I think Tiana and Cinderella shades, most of the remaining shades look pretty opaque. So I'm not gonna be too worried about the slight staining affecting how the shadows look on my eyes. Like I'm really happy I tried the I'm Wishing Snow White shade first because I think it would have ended up looking a little bit, just a little bit different if I had had my eyes stained by the Merida shade first and then tried to go in with I'm Wishing. Alrighty, so those of you who know I love gold, get ready, because <laughs> it's a gold shade. This is Colors of the Wind. It's Pocahontas's shade. Gonna swatch my finger that is not stained. Ooh. <laughs> I tried covering up the staining with some extra Urban Decay Primer Potion and it kind of worked a little bit. I think in normal circumstances, I think the proper way to do this would be to go in with like a concealer, but I know my concealer is super watery and messes with eyeshadow formulas, so unfortunately I can't do that. But here we go into Colors of the Wind. <laughs> So this shade on my eyes at least is actually really similar to how far I'll go, but it's just slightly more bronzed. I think you can see the differences much better swatched, whereas on my eyes, they almost kind of melt away into my skin tone just because of the color of my face. But this is another really good, really fun, kind of one and done neutral shade for my skin tone. So the next shade is called Down in New Orleans and it's Tiana's shade. I love Princess and the Frog. I cannot wait until they renovate Splash Mountain to be Princess and the Frog themed. I like, I like Splash Mountain as it is, but I'm just like so starved for Princess and the Frog content, I'm willing to sacrifice Splash Mountain if it means we get both like a Princess and the Frog themed ride and then a Tiana restaurant. Like, come on, Frozen's got a sequel, Tangle's got a cartoon series. I feel like in terms of the post-Renaissance Disney princesses, Tiana gets the least amount of love. And if that love comes in the form of a renovated Disney ride, you know, I'll take it. Especially if it means we get a restaurant. <laughs> I really like this shade. I don't think it shows up on camera. No, it doesn't. But I think you can see it best when it's swatched. There are like these purple flecks in an otherwise green shade. And I find that super interesting. It's not like any other super shock shadow I have in my collection. It's honestly not really like any eyeshadow I have in my collection, period. 
I don't know if I'd wear this all by itself all over the lid like I am right now. I think I would pair this with other green eyeshadows and probably keep this as like a lighter inner corner or a V shadow for the inner lid or something like that. Or maybe like even a topper. It is kind of starting to grow on me as just a single shadow all over the lid. It kind of gives my eyes this kind of like ethereal effect. I don't know if you agree with me, but I definitely would not pair with this lip. So the next shade is called Under the Sea. It's Ariel's shade. This is actually a re-promote from their original Disney Princess collection, I believe. I never got anything from the original collection as much as I was tempted to get specifically the Tiana lipstick. I know I haven't really been showing it recently on my channel because we've been in spring and summer, but I do love me a dark lip. You'll definitely be seeing a more dark lips as we get into fall. But yeah, um, I also really liked this shade from the Disney Princess collection, but I never owned it, so now I do. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, that's so pretty. You know what I said? Like I said earlier, I like my greens, so of course I was drawn to this both in this uh, um, collection and in the original Disney Princess collection. Ooh, hoo -hoo, buttery. You can tell this is an older ColourPop Super Shock formula compared to everything else in this collection because the texture is much more wet and slippery. With a Super Shock formulas like these, I actually prefer them once they've taken time to dry out a little bit because when I first opened them like this, the formula is so putty-like and slippery that, especially because I like to apply Super Shocks with my fingers, it gets a little hard to control. But I really like the color. I think this is actually the first Super Shock in this collection that did not really come with any kind of glitter. So the fact that there's like glitter all over the rims of my eyes is kind of standing out because this shade doesn't have any glitter. Okay, not gonna lie, I'm a little relieved we're at the final row because my eyes are starting to feel a little irritated and they're kind of hurt a little bit a little sore from all the swatching and wiping off the eye makeup but here we go the first shade in the last row is called arabian nights it's jasmine shade Ooh, this is like one of their kind of rougher less buttery formulas Ooh, and it's um kind of like one of the lighter shades kind of like i'm wishing and uh, this guy right here, or wait, no, this guy, um, Beauty and the Beast. So let's see what it looks like on the eyes. Okay, I have to say, so far out of all the shades, I like this one the least. At the very least, I would not wear this all over the lid by itself, especially with my pink lip. It's kind of giving me like 50s or like even like early 2000s kind of like sheer blue eyeshadow look. And I like me a blue, but I like kind of like a deeper, richer jewel tone kind of blue, not something kind of like pastel-like and light and sheer like this. Which is kind of sad because I do like Jasmine as a princess. Not to say that I dislike any of the Disney princesses, really. Um, I mean, there's ones kind of like Aurora for Sleeping Beauty where I really don't have an opinion on her one way or another because I feel like in her movie she like barely talked. Um, and then I remember like Ariel used to annoy me as a kid, which is funny because I really liked Little Mermaid. But I always thought that Ariel was kind of like whiny as a kid. I, I kind of like, I don't, it's not that I still don't have a little bit of an issue with Ariel. It's just like, I understand her character better now. So now it's kind of less of a, oh, she's so annoying. Why is she like this? It's more of a, she's annoying, but I understand why she's like this. So the second to last shade is called I See the Light. And it's Rapunzel's shade. I've been so tempted to start singing all of these songs. Because yes, they're all named after songs. And especially I See the Light. Even though I, I kind of I don't have that like Mandy Moore um, kind of pop voice. I still think it's a great song. Ooh, mine came a little bit uneven, but that's okay. Ooh. Okay, so this one's a little on the lighter side too. More of like a topper. See how it looks on the eyes.
Wow, yeah, this shade looks almost wet on the eyes, and there's a ton of glitter in this shade. But I'm kind of sad that not more of the purple is coming through. It's almost just like, yeah, like I added like a glittery gloss to my eyes. Um, swatched, yeah, the purple is just barely there. I thought maybe on the swatch you'd see the purple a little bit more. No, it's, it's kind of like, I think it's just because it's so light, it's kind of being overwhelmed by my skin tone. Maybe on a lighter skin tone, you'd see more of the purple in this shade, but on my skin tone, yeah, not so much. Okay, I'm losing daylight, but I'm at the last shade. Luckily, this new camera adapts to nighttime filming a little bit better than my old camera did, but definitely still loses something uh, once it gets dark enough. So this last shade is called A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes, and it's Cinderella's shade. I'm a little nervous because um, Jasmine shade was a light blue and it already was kind of looking kind of funky on my eyes. Well, this shade is even lighter. So let's see how it looks swatched. Ooh, this is kind of like the older, non-sparkly, more buttery formula, like the Ariel shade. Yeah. I wonder... I, I know for a fact that um, Ariel Shades are re-promote. Is this also a re-promote? I can't remember. Okay, if the Jasmine shade looked kind of like a paisley blue on my eyes, this looks pretty much white. I was wondering if this was a re-promote because I feel like ColourPop doesn't really do this kind of formula anymore in their newer Super Shocks. So I was wondering if, yeah, they like brought back the older formula just so that wouldn't be the only shade in the older formula or if this is a re-promote of a formula they really don't do anymore. When they do do their Super Shock shadows, it is kind of that more metallic, very sparkly, ultra glitter formula. I was kind of messy in my application, so I got the Super Shock shade kind of down my nose bridge a little bit, so then I just copied that on this side, and honestly, I kind of like how it turned out. It's almost kind of avant-garde. And yeah, there is no sparkle in this shade, but honestly, at this point, there's just so much glitter on my eyes. I think some of it has come off and is in the shade, but like I said, there really is no... Um, glittery sparkle in this shit. Well, no, no. <laughs> That's how pervasive glitter is. It'll just get everywhere. But there is no glitter in the shade, really. So yes, that was it. Me trying all of the new ColourPop Disney Princess Super Shock shadows. Let me know what you thought. Did you get the set like I did? Or did you maybe just pick up one or two of the Super Shock shadows? Which one is your favorite? Who's your favorite Disney princess? I know, like, I would have to say if I picked a favorite out of all of these, it's almost like I can't compare because some of these are more like a bold kind of green and blue shades, where some of them are a little bit more neutral. And I feel like neutrals and bold colors kind of sit in their own category. So if I'd pick um, favorite neutral, Definitely how far I'll go. I just made my eyes look like amazing, but still like neutral. Favorite colorful shade, I think has to go, I'm split between reflection and um, touch the sky because reflection is like right on that cusp of between being a neutral and a colorful shade because it's bronzy, but it's got kind of that red tone. So is it more of like a colorful red shade? Then obviously, you know, to touch the sky is like big, bold, colorful. But I need to go because my eyes hurt. Like I almost want to keep this eye look on just so I don't have to take off my eye makeup again. But anyways, that was it from me. Let me know what you thought. And until then, I will see you next time.